have time to come over and grab a seat for the karate demonstration. Demonstration by Lake Havasu Black Bell. Come on over. Take a seat. Taekwondo. CJ. I will practice in the spirit of Taekwondo with courtesy for fellow students, loyalty for my instructors, and respect for my juniors and seniors. Ma'am. Cheer up. Kunye. ATA. Good. We're going to start by doing a little bit of warm up. Um, obviously, it's more important for our adult students, but everybody can. Uh, you, because usually the kids are already running around as soon as they come in. But everybody needs to have their muscles warmed up even in hot weather of the summer because you don't want to pull anything or anything when you're because we're kicking and people like to try to do their best and kick higher or whatever. We don't want somebody to get hurt. So what the, one of the best ways to warm up is to use moves that we uh, use in what we're doing. So you want to use those same kind of moves because then it warms up those muscles. So this is Lake Havasu Black Belt Academy. Um, I've been, uh, so I started martial arts here in Havasu in 1995. And um, my instructor, uh, they divided into two schools a few years later. And then both my instructor and the uh, owner of the other school both passed away. So I ended up taking over the schools and we combined again. And that was about in the fall of 2008. So I've been running the school since then. But it's good for almost any age. Um, so I was, I don't know, 42 or 43 when I started. So you can do it. We start at age three. Um, today, the youngest we have is uh, a five-year-old that's here. We have a special program just for three to five-year-olds. Uh, we're part of the ATA, which means always take action. It's a big Taekwondo organization around the world. Uh, the people came from Korea who started it. Uh, they were sponsored and were brought over here and they started it and then um, it's spread around the United States and now it's gone back into Europe and Canada and South America. Quite a big contingent in South America. They have big te um, tournaments and stuff down in South America. In fact, last weekend, I was, no, two weekends ago, I was in Phoenix for some training, and uh, one of the masters from South America was here for the training, so that was fun to meet. So we have 
have several different parts to our training. Uh, we train with five different uh, activities. The first one we're going to be showing you is called our Pumses or forms, which are moves against an invisible opponent. The idea is to get some muscle memory down. So as soon as you block them out of the way, you're going to give them a kick back or you're going to give them a punch back because they're going to eventually hit you if you keep blocking. They're, they're, it's much faster to go a straight punch than to go a rounded block, you know, like this. It takes longer, so you want to really block them out of the way and then hit them enough to get them to leave you alone. the beginners start with the beginner form and Chirup Kunye Chunbi Song Am Il Jang and CJ one one man two two man three One more time, make sure you're putting your good power into there because we're practicing. One of the things with forms, since there's nobody there that we're hitting at, we can hit strong and kick strong because there's nobody there to get hurt. I want this front row to turn to their left. And we're going to do it again. Cheer up. Kunye. Chunbi. Song Am Il Jay. And CJ. One. One man. Two. Three. Three men. Four. Four men. Five. Five men. Six. Six men. Seven. Hey, yo, oh, yeah. Seven men. Eight. Eight, Eight men. men. Nine. Nine Five men. men. Barrow. Good job. Nice. forms get a little bit harder. Um, so this is our mid rank. Our mid ranks form is uh, sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> sixteen moves. We're doing a sixteen move form with our uh, mid ranks. And ready? Chirp. Kunye. Chunbi. Song Ram Saja. And. Ready? CJ. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven.
on, let's go get our weapons, please. We work with three different types of weapons in our basic program. Uh, song jabongs, which are uh, two sticks on a string. They're also called nunchucks. Um, we work on um, short sticks, which we call bong long ease. And then we work with long sticks, which we call jong bongs. So this cycle, we, we're working with our jong bongs. Spread out with the long stick so you don't hit anybody. Make sure you got plenty of room. Move down this way, Bodie. really good. They teach a lot of coordination. They teach a lot of, it's a really a good basis for defense, self-defense fighting. It's very traditional in uh, older martial arts using weapons. Several martial arts start with weapons. This is something we add into our program. Uh, they also take great discipline and self-control because we're not used to having something longer. We can watch our arms and feet to not hit somebody, but when you're holding a long stick, you have to be really careful and learn lots of more self-control. But they're also a lot of fun. A lot of people really are good at love weapons. Uh, we're gonna start with um, some of our little moves. The first one we're gonna do is our eagle twirl. Then we're going to move into our waist exchange. And our figure eight. From the overhead palm pass, we're going to add, add in our helicopter behind our back. And borrow. One of the things we work on with our staffs and other weapons are where to strike people. If you have a weapon, it's supposed to be used to have self-defense, defend yourself. Where can you hit people? So in Taekwondo, they have nine different spots to hit. Um, both sides of the neck, both sides of the ribs, the legs. They do an upward strike, they do a downward strike, and they do a poking strike. So they do nine strikes. So we're going to show you our nine strikes. And get set. If you want to change sides, we can do it on the other side. We should be able to do this left-handed and right-handed depending on how our opponent is, where he's coming from. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Burrow. And then we let them have some creative time. The high ranks have to actually make up a form by themselves and write it down, and they have to be able to perform that form over and over again. Uh, the low ranks, we just get them easy, using some of the moves they know, just be able to keep moving for 30 seconds. So it's called like a they don't have to write it down. But the, uh, so our higher ranks, you'll see they have a form already made up. The other ones are just uh, doing freestyle. 
So, ready? I want to see some moves against an opponent. You have 30 seconds to try to defeat your opponent. And, trip. Kunye. Should be. And, begin. have to finish their form it takes a little longer black belts have a form that actually the ata has made up for them to perform so when you become a black belt you have to learn that uh, special form so it takes a little bit longer than we learn is called board breaking. We do this to show power because we're working with other people in class. Because we're working with other people in class, we don't want to hurt the other people, right? These are people in our school that are helping us learn what to do. Um, so how do we know whether we actually have power to hurt somebody? And one of the things we do is have to break boards. We use plastic rebreakable boards. A couple of reasons. One is because they aren't wasting wood. But another one is they really take focus. A plastic board will only break in the very center of the board. Um, and plastic boards keep the... When you do them over and over, they get a little bit easier. But everybody has the same thing. Sometimes you get wood. If it's wet, more wet or more dry, it's harder or easier to break. And so um, these, are, these are divided by how... Um, how long the fingers are that hold them together. The easiest boards have very small fingers holding them together. And the um, higher rank boards, higher rank boards have long fingers to hold them together. So they're harder to break apart. But you have to hit the center. We also work on having to make sure we have to go through the board in order to break it. We learn hand techniques and foot techniques to break the board. So they have to be able to break it with both their hands and their feet. We also work on being able to use both sides. You don't want to have someone come up and you want to defend yourself and you broke your right arm. You have to be able to defend yourself then with your left arm, right? Jack Charlie.
also explain how important it is to do this at other people. You have to focus on your task, your hand, like schoolwork. You have to follow through. That means you have to get it completed. You have to make sure your name's on it. You have to make sure you turn it in at school. You have to do the whole task that's involved with your work. And the same way here. You can't just touch the board. You have to make sure you're going through the board, do the whole thing. Um, Last time through. to uh, uh, black belt you get uh, we also do uh, learn some other moves we have advanced classes we have uh, two advanced classes that they can get into one is called leadership and it works a little bit on doing performance things and so uh, this triples in that program so that's why she's going to show us some of her performance with her uh, sword form uh, mrs. Landoni is going to show you the black belt form the black belt form. are you doing third degree the black belt, she's a third degree black belt, so she's going to do her third degree black belt form. It has 83 moves. And Chirup, Kunye, Chunbi, CJ. We also have a class in, it's called Legacy, it's a class working with leadership skills where we're going to work with students who may be interested in becoming like Taekwondo instructors and they help out in our classes and stuff like that. So we go over some instructor points to be able to do it. Uh, the last thing we do with our basics classes, um, you know, all the way from beginner to intermediate to advanced, is what's called self-defense. This is, what are you going to do if someone actually grabs you? What can you do? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk, we're going to show you things to do if somebody would actually grab you. What if they grab your arm, a little one uh, to take you away, or if you're real small, maybe they'll pick you up and try to run off you with you to abduct you. So what can they do? 
to help themselves get loose, stop the person and get away. One thing we work really hard on is making a lot of noise. We also really are, we also really talk to them a lot about if they're in school, it doesn't matter. You can't do anything back. You just can tell somebody, right? Because even if somebody hits you first, you can't hit back. You've got to try to block it, but you've got to be able to go and tell them, get back, stay away, tell your teacher, tell the playground lady, wherever you are, what you have to do. much we're not in there to fight we're in there only enough to stop them enough that we have time to get away and like I said we work a lot on telling them stay away get back leave me alone we want other people to be able to hear and come to their assistance if they see somebody They like this one too, only because the older kids especially like to act, and they <laughs> they like to pretend they're really getting hit and make sounds, and it's pretty fun. No, no, because I'm not going to around and No, we're not going to set up there. I'm sorry. interested in uh, coming and checking out the school also. And let's line up, get in a nice straight line, please. And trip. Kunye. Song of Spirit of Taekwondo. CJ. Ma'am, I shall live with perseverance in the spirit of Taekwondo, having honor with others, integrity within myself, and self-control of my actions. Ma'am. ATA! And please face Mrs. Lindoni. Cheer up! Kunye! Thank you for helping us, Mrs. Lindoni. And face your, the front, face the audience. Cheer up! Kunye! And thank you for coming to their demonstration. Demonstration dismissed.